What's up, guys? Welcome to Season 3 of Project Freelance. I am your host, Kay Anagonio. Welcome back to the podcast. This week, I have my friend Phil Marcus on the podcast. He is a musician. He is also a videographer, which I think he is more known for. So I'm going to have him on this week to tell you guys some of his tips, his secrets, how he got started, and the things that he learned over the years and uh, I want to let you guys know that there are a couple links down below if you want to check them out. There are a couple for, you know, different affiliate things. Like, there are, there are a couple different ones down there. If you are a creator, if you're a filmmaker, photographer, there are some discounts for Adobe products down there. If you're a student, you get a discount. So you should check that out for sure if you're trying to get into editing or if you're trying to get into, you know, editing photos. There's Photoshop, Lightroom. It's all a part of the Adobe package. So check out that link down below. There's also a couple links to some uh, things that will help you with your adulting. For example, there's an app called Mile IQ that tracks your mileage for you and you can then later decide if that was business or personal and you can categorize everything. There's another one that takes care of your budget every month. There's like there's a couple of them down there that are pretty cool. And for you photographers, I have a couple photo contest websites down there if you want to check them out. Um you can enter absolutely free and you can grow over time you know what I'm saying I am almost a guru which is a part of guru shots guru shots is just a photography contest website but there are different tier levels and once you reach guru you can host contests and give away prizes and things like that and I am so close you guys I'm so close so if you want to check that out down below I think you get some free stuff I, I, I don't know just go down there check it out there's two photo contests, that one in Viewbug. Thank you guys for checking out this podcast. If you know me for my music, my band Chasing Satellites has an album out. It's called Split. It came out in early August, and I would love for you guys to check it out if you have time. It's streaming everywhere. You can get a physical copy at chasingsatellitesmusic.bandcamp.com. And if you would like to support the podcast in more ways than one, there's a couple donation links down below. You can donate some Bitcoin if you would like, some Ethereum, some Litecoin, some PayPal, whatever you want. And I thank you. Your money will be going towards my next project. All right, enough of me talking. Phil, let's do this podcast. What's up, guys? So I'm here with my friend Phil. Phil, you want to introduce yourself and what you do? Yeah, my name is Phil Marcus. Uh, I am a musician and videographer from Ontario, Canada. I play guitar for a band called Crimson Red, but I think I'm more known for a lot of my videography work. I've uh, I've done a bunch of videos for a bunch of local bands and and some touring bands uh, here and there. And yeah, those are pretty much what same as you. I've done like music videos and live footage, but I've also done like other videos such as like short films and sporting events and uh, sketches and a lot of that. But uh, yeah, anything in the music uh, around like music videos and stuff is my strong point. Yeah, I definitely feel the same way about my stuff. I'm very, uh, I guess, partial to doing anything in the music industry. And I love, I just love every opportunity that like comes from it. I mean, like for me personally, my music stuff has also like turned into getting video work in other areas, like for like corporations and that kind of stuff. And I'm sure that you've seen some of that as well. Yeah. You, you just have to diversify too. Like just uh, like, don't just like focus on like one style of a, a video, like try, like just take an opportunity, whatever comes to you. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of uh, young, you know, filmmakers, photographers, don't want to do other things like I hear a lot of people say like oh yeah I do portraits or I do weddings or like they have like one specific thing and I feel like a lot of people don't realize that yeah you can do weddings forever and make you know pretty good money but like you can't that's all you want to do is just weddings forever like you don't want to do anything outside of that it just seems boring to me it seems like that's like a way to make your passion a nine to five job Oh yeah, I remember. I've I've only done like one wedding and like a uh, it was like for a but uh my buddy's 
co-worker's sister, I think. It was, like, at a chapel at, like, a university. And uh, it was, like, a matinee wedding, which was, uh, uh, it was all right. So it wasn't, like, too hectic. Let's talk about a little bit about how you got started. It just started out as a hobby in high school. That was, like, just an elective for me. When I decided, uh, okay, this would be something fun. Well, I originally wanted to do music production in in college, but uh, uh, but and then I took um, some other stuff and like on the sidelines, like another application in here, and I actually got that one uh, pretty quickly. And but the college that I wanted to go to, um, I've been on the wait list twice. And as soon as uh, the application deadline was happening, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go with it. And uh, I think I made the right decision. I still did some like audio stuff in my uh, in my programs. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it's. Done. I just like I just love the idea of like it's just it's just a creative outlet. Yeah. Where did you study at? Uh, I studied at Conestoga College for three years. The first program I took was uh, called Media Foundations. It was a one-year certificate program. And uh, I like to think of it as like, I've always call it like a training wheels in the in the media like realm. So it's not just a uh, videography that I learned the basics on. I learned the basics of other stuff like advertising, public relations, or um, graphic design and radio and journalism, uh, that kind of thing. Because... Uh, you know, I've had I have classmates that enjoy public speaking and uh, public speaking. I they like being on camera or they love doing art and um, behind the scenes stuff. So it just diversifies and you just learn the basics of that and like gives you a I- better idea of what you want to do in the future. Yeah, I think my experience was similar. Uh, I did a, ba- a three year bachelor's degree um, and I was in uh, Dubai and then Australia when I was studying. And I had like the same kind of class structure almost like we did not only like, you know, cinematography, but we also did like audio engineering and we did like editing. Like we had all these different classes in the fi- like in the film world. And it was the same kind of thing, like you could decide like which direction you wanted to go in the future because they taught you a little bit of everything. So I thought that was, you know, super, super helpful. Yeah. And then after that, I took my two year program in videography where I learned more about that. And um, there's there's a lot to it. I'm not going to go into uh, detail, but you just learn the basics of like the business behind like, you know, TV and movies put together like but a budget for uh, different shoots that you're doing. And just overall, like different, different, like rundowns of like type of videos you want to do. Like we've done everything from film noirs and P- PSAs and uh, short films and all of that and news production. So uh, I, it's just a, a variety in that. Yeah, that's what we did, too. We had like everything you just listed. We did that. You know, we did like green screening and like we did we did a whole semester on like Foley and it was amazing. Like we had to take one of the old Jason Bourne movies because the audio sucked in like the first ones. So we had to like strip the audio and then like create all new audio. It was amazing. We had to do the voiceover, everything. It was so sick. So why did you choose to go into your field? Like why did you choose, you know, music and video? I like being creative with it. I took an elective called electronic field production, which was pretty much the course that I was waiting to do because I was like in my realm. Obviously, half of my section, uh, they did an elective where uh, they had to put together a show and um, uh, like a kind of news related show and all that like talk show kind of thing. And they and they aired that on the their our local station, whatever. I didn't do that. That wasn't that wasn't uh, in my row. I wanted to do more creative things, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, but yeah, it was just something it was just my two interests. I like I, I like the idea of putting it together and like just meshing in it. It just works well for me. So that's just that's how it started out. Tell me about your process from going from, you know, studying and school to, you know, being out in, you know, quote unquote, the real world trying to be a professional. It's not easy. I'll say that um, after high school, I took a year off just to work. I was a car wash attendant at a, at a gas station. I did that for a few years. And when uh, college came around, then I learned the basics. I'm like, OK, like it's fun, but I'm still still getting uh, to learn. So like you you have to like 
I don't know how to explain it, but like there's always um, new things that come around. The, all the the media is changing and like every like d- there's always going to be new changes every day. So like especially uh, how like the industry's changed, like a lot of people can do their own marketing. You don't really need a label and uh, and all that when like everything's been I've been DIY as far as like music goes for like. The majority, and as soon as college finished, I uh, I took up a part to, a part time at a local freelance company where they did a bunch of short films, and uh, that was fun for a while. And uh, now uh, now I'm uh, currently doing other things. I've been doing like working with like a couple local bands here and there, filming their sets, like and all that like these are bands that i played shows with or bands that i know personally and and uh, obviously if a band that i am familiar with i'll try to get in touch with them and see like hey are you interested in uh some photos or videos done and um they'll agree and like uh we'll go from there yeah that's kind of my process as well like i i even hit up people that i've worked with in the past you know and i've been like hey still here if you need some stuff and like i did it earlier this month and I do it like, you know, once every six months or once every year or whatever. So I like email all the people that I've worked for before. And I say like, Hey, if you guys need some more work done, I'm available because you know, they kind of forget that, you know what I mean? Because as a freelancer, especially remotely, they don't really see you in person. So they don't like have your face to like remember you by. So like if you, for me, like I go on tour, right? So I'll like tour like four months out of the year. So I can't do any freelance work during those four months. So my clients kind of like, you know, go with somebody else. And then when, when I come back and I say like, Hey, if you guys still want, you know, me to do some stuff, then some of them will say, hell yeah. And some of them will say like, yeah, but we still want to pay you what we were paying you like two years ago. And I'm like, or you could pay me more because my rates got up, you know, like freelancing is such an interesting thing to do. And tell me some of your like some of your favorite projects you've worked on so far. I think one video I did that I love uh, was um, it was a compilation video that I put for um, uh, we had a festival. Uh, we have a festival uh, in town called Koi Music Festival, and uh, that's where uh, we got a bunch of local bands together uh, and also some touring bands here like we had august burns red texas in july i don't know it was such a great lineup and like uh i had to get on board with the opportunity and shoot like my favorite bands here as far as music video wise there's a band that i know personally called uh amberwood they are an alternative indie band uh here they have like a kings of leon Foo Fighters kind of vibe and uh, I put together a video it was for one of my classes uh, it was for my project and uh, I did a music video for them and I had to put together this like storyline um, uh, for a song called Confessions basically the storyline that I had to put together was um, this girl um, she goes to like an intervention and uh, she uh, loses I think either a friend or a family member uh, she uh, goes to like a flashback of why she's at the intervention pretty much. And like uh, she pretty much has like a drinking problem after um, she reads like uh, this obituary. And then it's just her friends like uh, uh, standing by her pretty much kind of thing. And like and this is coming from me because I do not like I don't really like to do music videos with like storylines just because the it's a longer process for me. I like to keep things a little bit simple, but for that video in particular, uh, that's one of my favorites that I've done. And I got a lot of good feedback from it. Yeah. For me, that's, that's kind of the same for me, like storylines. Like I love storylines. And like, when you see a good storyline in a music video, it like captures you, you know, but I'm the same kind of way. I like, you know, I like natural or I guess more natural stuff, like the band (laughs) that you're like listening to, you know? Um, But I mean, I did, yeah, I did one with a storyline that I really enjoyed doing uh, for Lacey Sturm. It was right, it was literally like four days after I got off of a two month tour and (laughs) they flew me to Pittsburgh and I had four days to film this music video before they had to like leave. It was crazy, but yeah, definitely one of my favorite like projects that I've worked on. Tell me some stories about times that you've been like screwed over by clients, like clients have like not paid you or like before you like figured out contracts and stuff like that if you have any 
I don't think so. Like a lot of the clients that I've uh, that I've worked with, like the majority of the my clients are they're open and honest with me and they're happy with my work. Um, uh, usually they'll offer me um, uh, the, they'll come to me or I come to them. Uh, it's pretty much along the lines of like it's hard uh, getting like new bands to work with. It's either the three, uh, the same three excuses that I get. They either they already have a videographer, but they don't have new music or or any music recorded, or they just don't have the money for it. So that, that's my only struggle with it. I don't think I've ever been screwed over. I think I've messaged bands that I, I and I I don't get a response from them, and I'm like, okay, I better move on. Look for, look at the next band and see if they're interested. So. Yeah, I feel like local scenes everywhere are kind of similar just because I've, you know, I've lived in a couple different uh, areas and I, you know, I lived in Australia for a minute. So like the local scene there is similar to the local scene here. And it sounds like it's similar to the local scene there because, I mean, that's just how bands are. Like they don't have money. They don't have any, you know, anything coming up or whatever. And like the other excuse I hear all the time is like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to take you on tour. Like we want to take you on our next tour. And then they just keep saying it over and over and over again. And you never hear from them. And they always like want shit in return, like as a favor, even though they haven't done anything for you, you know? Yeah, I agree. Like, you know, like like even in my city, like obviously we're big on the like the arts community here, but like. There's just not a lot of opportunities for videography. You would have to like relocate, like to like, uh, like relocate in Toronto or something. Like for uh, for me at least, um, where there's more opportunities. But that's that's not that's not like what I want to do, especially in Toronto. Like Toronto's like really hectic, um, at least. So like. I don't know from like just from like going there like cause I remember in school like I used to go I used to go to Toronto like every other week for with my class like because um we have the Toronto International Film Festival here and um yeah so like there we go to like a bunch of like you know um uh what's it called like a there's a they have a seminar uh program where they bring in um different people uh uh, from the industry, like, you know, go over the movies and like have a QA and a and that thing. I remember the first one we did, um, it was with, um, it was with George A. Romero from, um, the, uh, who was the director for Night of the Living Dead. And I don't know that th that's cool for a while, but like Toronto's like really hectic, like, but like as much as like the many like opportunities there for, uh, for me, at least, I don't know if I would want to relocate like at, at this time, at least. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I feel like Toronto, I mean, I haven't been there, but from like what I've seen, you know, and, and what my friends tell me is it kind of seems like it's like the Los Angeles or like the Hollywood of Canada or I guess of, you know, <laughs> that province. But um, yeah, I I still like I got to go like Toronto is like one of those places like I want to go photograph, you know, I just want to go film the city because it just looks so yeah, cool. It, 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 there's a lot of uh cool places that you can go to like a lot of great venues here and by like uh not uh, not just like music wise but just for everything like culture uh, culturally wow just talk let's just talk about canada for the rest of this <laughs> uh, okay let's do okay what's something you know now in your like career where you are that you wish you knew when you started so like if you could give your former self advice uh i would say <sighs> I get, I say this all the time. I would say not to rush things when you're trying to make a deadline. Cause now, now I'm pretty much, um, a perfectionist now. Like, so I honestly, like whether a project will take me like a few days or a few weeks or months or something like whenever the project is, I, I decide wh whenever the project is done, that's when I'll schedule it or upload it and whatever, or, or approve it from, uh, the bands or whatever. So, or a client. So yeah, just like, that's what I would say. Like not, n not rush things, take your time wisely. And like, you know, like look at, look at your, cause you, who knows you might like spot a mistake last minute and you're like rendering and I'm like, Oh shit, I forgot to like color grade like this section or whatever. So, yeah. 
Yeah, for me, it's always like a frame, like <laughs> like two frames weren't color corrected for some stupid reason. So now I have to go back and re-render this entire video. Yes, it's the actual worst. Uh, so do you do you like write music for the things you film as well? Like things outside of obviously like music videos? Sometimes I, I, I don't know. It depends on the project or because uh uh, last year I put, I put together a collaborative VP, uh, called digital citizen. And pretty much the point of that, of that was not only just to showcase my videography and music side, uh, but, uh, that also helped showcase, um, uh, local musicians in my city. Like I had a different musician perform on e or a guest guitarist on each track, um, so like, so that each track kind of has its own personality. Wow. That's awesome. I love stuff like that. I love when there's little, you know, that's like stuff that normally people wouldn't really notice, but it's like that, it's like that stuff that makes you really appreciate what goes into making music. You know, like there's this band from Perth, um, called North Lane or sorry, not North Lane, uh, Savior. And they put out this whole album and on the entire album, they have this uh, female, uh, she's like a singer songwriter that's local to Perth. And they had her like sing backing tracks on every song. And it's, it was like the, it was like something that small and that little, but it like made the album. You know what I mean? Like it makes the album yeah. better. Well, like, yeah, other than that though, I, I did put together like, well, I'll put together like couple instrumentals for like, you know, if a if short film would happen, but like, but, you know, just for time consuming, it's, it's best to like, try to find, you know, other music, even if it's like royalty free, like instrumentals that kind of has that, like, um, <clears throat> Basically, you want to try to find music that has like the right mood for a specific um, a specific like part or specific project or whatever. So, yeah. 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 No, I agree with you. I, I do that with every video because I feel like every project is different and it has its own like story and its own life. And so I even, you know, I film everything I do differently just because like one, like why be boring and do the same thing but like i so i did a video for ap uh machine gun kelly was on the cover of one of the magazines and i did a behind the scenes video and you know he's a rapper so i made his video very like old school like mtv's like cribs or like whatever like those like hip-hop style uh shows and then i did another video with like uh like neck deep and it was just them skating so it was a very like punk type of vibe you know so i agree with you every project has a different life and a different feel um okay well do you want to give like some final final thoughts final tips final notes um yeah for sure um uh just have fun uh if you're just starting out uh or like i don't know um uh, sorry let me start that over um yeah, uh, I would say, you know, honestly, just have fun with it. Don't try to treat it like a job. Otherwise, like you're not going to have fun with it. Um, uh, and always try to diversify. Like I said, uh, uh, mentioned earlier, like, uh, you know, talk to people, ask questions, like keep networking because like you never know who you're going to meet or or uh, who, who you get to work with. I remember I know uh, last week or or sorry, not this past weekend, but last weekend, uh, the weekend before, uh, uh, I had the opportunity, uh, a few friends of mine, we had the opportunity to work with, uh, Mandy Bujol, who's a boxer. Uh, and, um, you know, she, uh, she won gold at the Pan Am games and actually got to compete in, uh, uh, the Olympics last year in Rio. Uh, so it was definitely, uh, a fun experience. I've never shot boxing before. And, uh, it was like one of the most energetic uh, shoots that I've ever done like, in a while. So uh, on, uh, take up every opportunity you can uh, j uh, at the same time. Just uh, take your time with it. And uh, and, you know, honestly, yeah, just have fun with it and um, enjoy every moment of it. Awesome. And uh, where can people find you on the internet? 
Uh, they can find my videos at vimeo.com slash Marcus Videography, facebook.com slash Marcus Videography, Twitter at not Phil Marcus. Uh, if you like to help uh, support some of my videos, you can go to patreon.com uh, slash Marcus Videography. And uh, I post bonus material on there, such as behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I do audio commentaries. Uh, you might get your name in the credits and all of that. So. Uh, if you like what you see, um, definitely um, take an option there and look at uh, look at some of the perks and uh, go from there. Thank you guys for checking out this week's episode of Project Freelance. Don't forget, if you want to check out Phil's work, all of his links will be down below, as will mine. And I will talk to you guys next week on the podcast on Project Freelance. The guest next week is going to be awesome. Thank you guys for checking these podcasts out. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed and leave me a rating. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.